Okay, so someone asked me how to like feed so many fry in such a large body of water evenly. And I just wanted to show what I do. And this here is their meal with water. Just clean roadie water. And then I just mix it all up as I go. But this is the meal for the entire pond. This is just a pipette, a three millimeter one. You can honestly use whatever you want, but I wanted to actually just show how to do this, or at least how I do it. The film on top of the water is from so many feedings. These guys are growing pretty fast. So I obviously am picking up feedings accordingly. And as you do that, it leaves that little down. This, it's actually very, very, very thin, so it's not bothering them at all. I'm just leaving it because as you expand your feedings, you'll notice this will grow. It'll just keep, you'll go back and forth between clear and then this little fog. This little fog is not like a straight film either. It's just, like I said, it's from increased feedings. There is still almost 100% success in this pond, by the way, and by that I mean it's usually, you know, pretty, it, it's common to lose some during the first little while. Out of the about 3,000 that were added to this. I have noticed less than 100 are dead. Everyone else is doing just fine. So, probably here in a week, I will start adding a little bit more water and I'll start increasing this. I'll keep you guys updated on this pond. I've done this process many, many, many times before, but I never actually put it on video, so I'm gonna start doing that for you guys. But um, yeah, so this is an eight foot by four foot pond. Um, these are 11 and a half inches tall. <sighs> right now there's only like three and a half inches, four inches of water in here. Like I said, starting in about, in about a week, I'll watch, you know, sizes, what they're doing, how active and everything. And, then I'll raise it about an inch every week. And that's pretty much it. No water changes, no nothing else. I'm not messing with the bottom of it. And yeah, I know you guys can't see from this angle, but this is literally just slammed, slammed with fry, like incredible amount. Um, calculated it up and it's about a 97% um, survival at this point of the entire spawns. So yeah, it's a little bit more than usual, I would say at this age, we will see. Um, I typically tell people to expect from start to finish, even in the most ideal situations, you're looking at like 50 to 60%. With how I do it, I do let them eat each other off for the small ones. I don't sit there and try and save runs or any of that stuff. So keep that in mind. but with the process of actually letting them all grow and raise up and not catering to the weak, you can expect, like I said, like 50, 60% from start to finish, as in like an adult fish are going to make it. So if you have a spawn of 300, you can expect that by the end of it, and that includes like they'll eat off most of the coals and everything. It's very rare that I have to actually do that. So. With all of that in mind, you're looking at about 150 adult fish that are, you know, viable, healthy, growing well fish. I never agree with sitting there and separating out the small ones and then, you know, <laughs> that way they can actually still survive and then let the, let the sizes be two different batches. So, you know, like I said, I, I just, I believe in do not cater to the weak. You, when you're growing these out and you're breeding them, hell, they're producing so many anyway, you just go, 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 go. 
and you let only the strongest ones survive. And by the time you're at the end of it, and no, that actually does not mean that the ones who survive are the most aggressive either. Because while they're growing up, you have complete peace. But they will still be cannibalistic in these early stages of life. So for example, if you have a fry who's only half the size of the other one, if that other fry is able to technically eat the other, it will. So um, if you do too many hiding places and stuff like that as well, then what you end up doing is you're basically hindering your fry's ability to find the food easily. And in these early stages, they really, really, really need to be able to find their food very easily because they don't, they're not, you know, <laughs> they're not very good equipped hunters at this age, but Anyways, I just wanted to make this video, show you guys how I did that and how I do do it and why, you know, with, with you adding the extra water too and then stirring it all up, it gives you the ability to, you know, spray it all over the place and not be spraying straight food. So it's diluted enough that it gives a nice even feeding everywhere rather than big clumps of food or too much food to, you know, it just kind of, and, and as far as like, oh, how much are you doing and all this stuff, that, that really depends on so many factors, so many factors. And that, that's just, you know, that comes with experience and stuff like that. I can say that these, these guys just got done being fed banana worms, a very, very, very large meal of banana worms. Um, they are getting this at this stage three times a day and that will be bumped up. Right now, what I'm doing is increasing meal size, but three meals, and then next step, I'll do five meals. I also have uh, brine shrimp that I'm about ready to start introducing as well. I already did um, a couple times just for, you know, just to kind of get the, kind of train the fry to eat all through the wa uh, water column rather than only wanting to eat up top because some of them only wanted to eat up top, which if you notice, you, well, you can't see it now, but they actually are all going to the bottom and then coming back up. So that was my goal with that. And yes, it does work. If you, if you throw the brine shrimp in there on a very, very small, small meal, they'll watch the food and they'll chase it, but they'll go to the bottom and they'll see, hey, wait, there's food down here. And the next thing you know, they'll start eating all off the bottom. So. When you're feeding worms, that's a really good way to do it. Um, another little tip, but, and yes, it did work. It, like all of them did it. So um, they are also pretty huge monkey see monkey do's, but that being said, the best way to do it is just to lead them straight to it. Um, but between that, you get 100% just success. It's such smooth sailing this way. Um, I hope you guys find this video useful and also to the person who asked this question. Thank you because it gave me some video content to make, but, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day.